Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda Rose and today I am coming back to you guys with a q and A. I have received so many questions from you all and so I'm really excited to get into that today. It's obviously going to be very uh, teacher focused and teacher based and I will say that some of the questions are repeated and so I did take out some of them. I'm not going to obviously say the same thing over and over so I just wrote them on a piece of paper and also some of them are going to require extended responses so what I decided to do was split this video up into two parts the first part which is today right now I'm gonna do 10 questions and then the second part I have seven listed so far but if there's a question that I do not answer please feel free to leave a question down in the comments below and then I can add that to part two's video as well so that's pretty much it let's get into it here is my teacher Q&A part one first question do you want to stay a teacher or go into administration? Great question. Um, I want to say about two years ago, I dabbled with the idea of going into administration. Um, more so because teaching requires just a lot of work, a lot of effort. Um, I go over all of this in my other videos. Um, but I feel like now because I have a bit of a leadership role at my current job and I don't I don't know the idea of removing myself a step away from the kids really does it makes me sad it makes me sad to think about it um, to not have that one-on-one -on -one direct connection with them um, and so as of right now I don't know I don't know I thought that that's what I wanted at least two years ago and now having this leadership position and it just being more about managing teachers I don't I don't know if I'm ready for that yet I don't know if I'm ready to make that full transition but maybe maybe in the next couple of years I might have a change of heart question number two how did you know you wanted to become a teacher if I'm being honest and I I never like when people are like, eh, I wanted to be a teacher my whole life. But honestly, that was me. So growing up, I was always like reading to my younger sister. I remember my mom had purchased like a chalkboard and I would be teaching her the alphabet. I just always enjoyed teaching and learning and teaching people. Um, and then when I was in college, I knew that I wanted for sure to be a teacher, but I wasn't sure what subject. And I originally was going for English, and I had taken two English courses, a poetry class and a writing class, and I was so turned off. And I realized that although I love reading and learning, I love reading and learning about history. And that English and reading and writing can just be the vehicle that I use to teach history. And so I decided to just switch my major and go into teaching history. But yes, I always wanted to be a teacher, always had a passion for teaching, always loved explaining things. I loved just being like, okay, let me tell you really quick. Oh, you're confused? Or if someone asks a question and we don't know the answer, I'm the first one to go on Google. My friends have even made jokes where they're like, just wait, Amanda's gonna tell us the answer in a second. So I, it's just, it's in my DNA. It, it's who I am. That for sure, I know it's who I am. I just love teaching. Question number three. Is it true that parents care less about their kids at the high school level? I would be careful to say that they care less about their kids. I don't think that parents care less about them, but I do think that parents are less involved because they may think that their children are old enough to be responsible for their education. Um, and so, yeah, I wouldn't say that they care less, but I do see that high school parents are less involved, but I think because their kids are older, they hold them to a higher standard as far as responsibility. Number four, are kids left back in high school and have you ever failed anyone? Uh, yeah, kids are left back in high school. It is like any other grade. One reason, one major reason is because they can't pass their Regents exams. And I have had two students 
not graduate because of my class. So I, this is my seventh year and God willing, no one this year will be failing, but I don't fail kids. And I know that this is like annoying for teachers to be like, um, you fail yourself, but that is, that is true. Everyone has the same opportunity. Everyone has the same fair chance to pass the course. And if you are missing assignments, if you are not performing well on exams, if there are projects, if homework is missing, if assignments are incomplete, or um, right now, uh, copying is like a really big issue. So many of our students are just taking pictures of their work on their phone and then they're just spreading it around to their peers. And so if things are copied, it will also hurt obviously a student's grade. I can't. Number five. What are some of your expectations for your students? This is a hard question because I think it does change, but uh, right off the bat in the beginning of the school year, especially the first week of school, I do use that word expectations. Hey, these are the things that I expect from you and they're really just low key rules, but I like to use the word expectations and then I like to flip it and be like, okay, as your teacher, what are some expectations you have for me? So some expectations that I have for my students are that they would not curse in classroom, that they would raise their hand if they want to go to the restroom, um, that they would be respectful of myself and each other. So when it comes to joking in class, a lot of times, I mean, I'm very like, if I even sense that there's a bit of bullying happening in class. And so there's a rule where if you want to make a joke and if you're trying to be Mr. Funny Guy or Miss Funny Guy, then make jokes about yourself. Let us all laugh at you, but don't make someone else be the butt of a joke for your for your laughter. And so number six, what made you choose secondary education? Um, when I think about my teenage years and when I think about everything that I went through, my teenage years were the most um, I was the most vulnerable, whether it be with relationships, hanging out with the right people, the wrong people, uh, grades. And so for me, that was such a sensitive time in my life and such pivotal moments that could have literally changed the course of the rest of my life. And so I really do feel like I owe it to the teenagers to be that voice of reason, to be that place where they can seek advice from and be able to share my experiences. Um, and I also do like the conversations that you have with um, upper level students. Uh, I, I like challenging them in their thinking. I love playing devil's advocate and they love playing devil's advocate with me back. And so I think that th just that age group, they're on the cusp of becoming an adult, experiencing college, afraid of what the future has for them, but then also just challenging their thinking. And um, for me, that's why I love secondary. Can you talk about the process of your credentials? So yes, I get asked this question a lot. People want to know my process because I started teaching at 22. So please keep in mind that this may be different for the state that you live in. And also, I received my certification seven and a half, almost eight years ago. I want to say eight years ago. And so a lot can happen in eight years, a lot can change in eight years. And so my process, I don't know, may not even be available. I have no idea, but I'm just going to speak from what I did. So I went to Queens College, which is a four year school here in New York, and I studied history as my major and education, secondary education as my minor. And so I was able to student teach when I was going for my bachelor's degree, and I was also able to take um, education courses and history courses that aligned so that I can receive an initial certification. So that's initially what I received. An initial certification that allows you to teach right out of college, but you have to receive your master's within five years. And once you get your master's, you have to apply for a professional certificate. So because I had my initial, it meant that I was able to teach right out of high school, right out of college. Um, I had taken all of the required seminars. I think at the time there were three different exams that I needed to pass, a content one, a, like a morals and ethics one. I don't remember all of them. It's been so long. But I did all of those things while I was taking my bachelor's in college. Once I graduated, 
Um, I took a year off of school. I honestly thought that I was gonna get a job right away and I didn't and so that was really disappointing and so then I went the second year to um, get my, my master's degree. Now, it took me a very long time to get my master's degree. It took me more than five years because I was already out a year and then I ended up booking a job, the job that I'm at now and even taking two college courses along with all of the work that you get from uh, work and grad school, it was overwhelming. Like I, I had no life, <laughs> no life. Um, but I was able to get my degree, but it did take me longer than five years, believe it or not. And so because it took me longer than five years, I was able to apply for an extension on my certificate. So again, your initial certificate is five years. You're able to apply for an extension twice, I believe, which gives you an extra two years. So I was able to apply for the extension and then I believe that same year, however, I was also graduating. So for me, I just wanted to play it safe and I didn't want to compromise my job or my certificate. And so I ended up applying for an extension and then the following year I received my degree and I was able to receive a permanent certification. So was it easy to get a job after college? Yes and no. I was being really picky about where I wanted to work. I wanted to work really close to home. And I was also being very picky about the type of position that I wanted. I wasn't open to just teaching anything. Oh, also, I just remembered at the time, the New York City Department of Education had a hiring freeze. Duh, okay. So they had a hiring freeze, which meant that there were way too many teachers in circulation, way too many people who were graduating with teachers' degrees, and there was a halt on hiring for the DOE. Only very, very specific schools were hiring for the DOE, and so that was one of the most difficult things. And I remember even, um, when I was doing my student teaching, a lot of teachers being like, why are you doing education? You know that you can't even get a job once you graduate. And uh, they were obviously trying to be helpful, but of course that was very discouraging. And I graduated and it was really hard to even book an interview. And then I ended up um, not being able to even get an interview. And so I was a substitute teacher for a year. And then after substitute teaching for a year, I was able to get a job at the place that I'm currently working at right now. Number nine, how do you keep going after the hardest teaching days? Sleep, reality TV, um, spending time with my friends, with my husband, with my family. Like honestly, there are a lot of really difficult days, but I'm grateful that every day is not a difficult day. Um, it's also just finding me time. And so I love um, my bullet journal. I love filming. I love going out and eating with friends or just having a day or a moment doing my devotions. I set aside time for me and the things that make me happy. It all goes back to uh, my video, The 10 Things I Wish I Knew is that teaching takes up a lot of time and it's emotionally and physically draining. And so making sure that you find time to do the things that make you happy, even if that's for an hour or two hours a day, you have to put those things into your day. You have to schedule them in because those are the things that bring you joy. And so you have to make sure that there is a nice balance between those things. Any advice for someone who is looking to make a career change to be a teacher? Um, number one, don't go into teaching because of the summers and the short days. Um, those things are short lived and by the time you make it to the summertime, you need that time off. I know that for some people it's like, oh, but you get this time, like you are crawling to the summer, please believe me. And so you have to have a heart to serve people. If you have a heart to serve people, if you have a heart to serve children, if you have a desire to teach, if you love learning, then I think then you are making the right career choice. Um, all of the other things that come along with teaching, all of the outside things, all of the benefits, for me, those things are 
They're not what keep me going. It is the satisfaction that you get from impacting somebody's life. And so if that's what you genuinely enjoy doing, you love teaching, you love learning, you love spending your time with kids, you have patience, um, and you 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 enjoy the content that you're even going to school for like I am passionate about social studies I love learning about certain things I've even like been on the verge of crying in class talking about a topic in history because it just I I love the topic I love the topic of social studies and history and so I think that if you bleed your subject if you are super passionate about what you're going to school for if you love children if you love teaching if you love learning if you have patience if you like explaining things um, then I think then you are on the right track and I would just say give yourself time be patient with yourself being a teacher is difficult you do get the hang of it but um, it is a process and don't beat yourself up if you feel like you're messing up if you're not understanding what you're doing it does take time but that's pretty much it those are all 10 of my questions answered for you for this teacher q a again if you want your question answered please leave um a comment down below i do have a few already set up for part two but definitely throw some down there if it's something that you're interested in and i did not mention in this video and also don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and I will see you all in the next video.